Hey guys, Jay Young here with Young Red Angus. Thank you so much for making this video a part of your day. Don't attempt to adjust your YouTube dial. Yes, I shaved, so I'm sporting the baby beard right now, not what most of you are used to, but I digress. I had a fun week this week. Uh, last Sunday, I got to give a ranch tour uh, to the guys from Rancho Buena Vista. That's how I got this really cool Rancho Buena Vista hat. Um, showed them what was going on with the uh, the cattle. Uh, sorry so much for the bird background noise, but I think we're just going to run with it and deal with it, uh, unlike the last episode where I got rid of them. The Kansas Department of Ag put together that tour, and so I was really, really grateful that I got to show that delegation from Mexico some of the things that we're doing with rotational grazing on our, our cover crops, but mainly the, the cattle and what we're doing with our Red Angus cattle. That was a lot of fun. If you like Red Angus cattle and you're from Mexico, check out Rancho Buena Vista. And this is what we all feel. Let's just not deny it. Something pulls and it tears in the deepest place. This is what we all know. Why must we still fight it? It's time to open our eyes and acknowledge the writing on the wall. Today's episode is sponsored by Regen Ag Labs. Regen Ag Labs is the lab we trust, so check them out at regenaglab.com. This week, I've been busy pulling soil samples most of the week. So earlier this year, I got enrolled into the Carbon Soil Initiative, and part of being involved in the Carbon Soil Initiative is taking soil samples and sending them off to Regen Ag Lab so that we can get the Haney test done, and I believe also the PFLA test done as well. Did you guys see Caleb photobomb the video? I didn't notice that he comes by later. He's like, hey, I think I photobombed your video. Totally didn't notice it. So I'm planning on getting into the carbon soil initiative uh, in a later video, but right now I just kind of wanted to talk about um, the cool process of getting the soil samples today. So um, I'm working with Liz Haney on doing these soil samples. And so we got the field maps to her and she put all the field maps together and put them on Google Earth. So all I had to do is uh, load the pins for the, the fields, go to Google Earth and then drive uh, to those locations in my field and pull soil samples. So this part of the process is a fairly easy one. You go to the different pins that are in the field and you pull a soil sample at six inches and then do another one from six to 12. To me, the coolest part of the whole process was following the location off the GPS. Uh, you don't need cell phone service while you're doing it. You do need it to acquire the app and acquire the GPS. But once you have that on your phone, even if you lose service, the GPS will still take you to the different locations uh, on the maps so that you can pull your samples from those spots. So here we're in a beardless trip field that we just planted to Jimmy Red Corn that we're planning on cutting for silage. So I just left that location, pulled up the GPS on my phone and followed it to the next pin uh, on the map and then stopped and pulled the next sample. Most of the samples are pretty easy to pull. Uh, one field uh, where I grazed the cattle too long uh, was a little bit more difficult, but other than that, like it was fairly easy to, to pull the, the, the core samples. And it's really easy, as you see in this video, I would just push it in to where it was about six inches, pull it out, drop it in the first bucket, and then I would go in the same hole and go six inches deeper to get the sample from the next level of six to 12 inches. So this filled up a good couple hours, uh, two days out of my week this week was just driving around, following the map and pulling core samples. Yep, lots of fun.
So now that I have all the soil samples collected, we're gonna send those off to Region Ag Lab and we'll get the results. And in a future video, we'll talk about the results. But right now, the main thing I wanted to talk to you guys about in this video is intimidation. Uh, a lot of times I see farmers get intimidated by some of the things that they don't understand or they don't know uh, in the soil health world and it freezes them and it paralyzes them and it keeps them from moving forward. Uh, case in point, let's talk about my own fears and um, shortcomings. Ugh, I hate that. Um, I, I hate thinking about what I'm about to talk about. So. For the longest time, I've heard about the Haney test and realized it was something that we needed to do. And for the longest time, I drug my feet on doing it. Um, you know, we would have, we have an agronomist that works on our irrigated circles and then we don't spend the money on uh, the other circles. We, or, I mean, the other fields, we just feel like it's a, an expense that we didn't want to take. We just put down the 40 pounds of, uh, phosphorus on everything and then depending on whether it's wheat milo or corn we put down you know whatever we think we need of for of on nitrogen uh in the form of urea on on those fields and we used to apply um and hydras getting into regenerative agriculture and finding out about cover crops and everything that we need to do to improve our soil health one of the things that i heard about early on was the haney test and how it's different and how it's all these things and all of those things intimidated me because I didn't really understand the whole process of other soil tests to begin with. Um, you know, to be honest, like I, I feel like I understand the whole point of the Haney test now and why it's different, but I don't feel confident enough to explain it to you in a video. And so that the reason I bring this up is because we're, you know, I started doing regenerative agriculture in 2016 and here we are in 2023, and this is the first year we're actually even running a Haney test. Now, though I haven't done the Haney test, we have done the complete nutrition digestion test that Regen Ag Labs does, and I really, really love that test. So much of what I see in people not doing regenerative agriculture, not even trying, is that I don't think that they wanna admit it, but it's the fear of the unknown or fear of failure that keeps them from even trying to do it rather than just trying it on one quarter or trying it on one field or doing the research to see if regenerative agriculture is even possible or something that would work on their farm. They just immediately shut you down uh, and tell you why it won't work or why it's not going to be beneficial. They end up letting the fear uh, keep them from moving forward uh, in their farming operation because they they it paralyzes them basically so it's funny to me that um here i am uh just now doing the haney test when the thing that frustrates me a lot is is that people are afraid of of even trying and then they don't try and yet that's probably one of the biggest reasons why i've waited so long to do the haney test because i'm like well i need to understand it better before I even have it done, rather than just taking the Haney test or, or doing the Haney test and learning, you know, what it is and why it's a benefit to me and, and why um, I need to have that test done as opposed to a different a type of soil test. And so anyway, there, there's a number of things I've kind of realized that, realized like that on our farm that I've allowed fear to keep me from even like it. To me, my time is so valuable. Why would I waste the time on something that I'm gonna be confused on, can't understand or whatever. Uh, bricks and getting a refractometer is, is a similar thing. I just bought one. Um, so now we're gonna read the bricks layer level on our plants. Um, something it's, it's really, really simple to do. Yet this is the first year I'm doing it because again, the, the, the intimidation thing. Um, and so I know I talked about, you know, the Haney test and pulling these samples, kind of bringing up what we're doing here. But really the, the main focus I wanted to bring up with this video is, is whatever it is on your farm that you're trying to accomplish or that you're kind of trying to do, if something is in your way of accomplishing what you want to do, um, 
and especially if it's fear, if you're afraid of failing or you're afraid of trying something new because you don't think you understand it or you don't think that you're able to, to get it, uh, lean into that fear and embrace that thing that you're afraid of and learn about that thing uh, and, and try, even though it makes you feel incredibly uncomfortable, like making this video actually makes me feel incredibly uncomfortable because I'm talking about what it is that I'm, I'm really not good at and it's embarrassing to admit to other people in regenerative agriculture. And it's, um, you know, it's similar with talking about our mistakes on Johnson Sioux. I, I try to do, do a really good job of explaining our failures and our shortcomings uh, it's really hard though. It's, it's not easy um, because you, regardless of whether or not you know in your head you're helping other people, you still feel like a moron in your head and you're putting it out there on the internet for every single person to see. Um, and so I realized that that's what I wanted to make this video about because that's what's happening right now in my my life is, is I'm having to face this fear and embrace it. And what better way to face your fear and embrace it than make an awkward video and bring up what you're afraid of and, and what's held you back. So anyway, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I'm excited now that we're sending these off to get the Haney test back so we can explain to you what's going on in our soils and uh, what, we're, what we're trying to accomplish with the Haney test and the PFLA, uh, the Carbon Soil Initiative. It was awesome meeting the guys from Rancho Buena Vista, but I really wanted to hammer that home with you guys that are watching, like whether it's Johnson Sioux or cover crops or interseeding cover crops in your corn or the Haney test or bricks or whatever it is, do not let the fear of the unknown keep you from accomplishing what you need to accomplish on your farming operation. Uh, because if you're in regenerative agriculture, chances are you're changing your community and your world because other farmers see what you're doing and they want to be a part of what you're doing and, and what's going on on your farming operation. So anyway, that's what I want to share and that's what I want to encourage you guys in. Uh, keep moving forward, keep pursuing soil health and peace out.